You could be in Killarney for a month on a different trip every day. Hello, my name is Walter and welcome to our next episode of Walter's Way Around Ireland. We'll be going to some of the most scenic, historical places all around Ireland. Places which I love and I want you to come with me. And in this episode, we are in Killarney in the lovely County Kerry in the southwest of Ireland. We'll be meeting people like Ducks Donoghue, whose family has been on the lakes of Killarney here for generations. And Morris O'Connell in Lakeview will be giving us some of his beautiful new Liberator whiskey. So do you want to do another take, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> and my great friend Pat Moynihan, a local tour operator here in Killarney. If you ask most people in Killarney town, they would tell you that Killarney is from two Gaelic words. Kill, C-I-L-L, -L, Oirne, A-I-R-N-E. Literally translated means the Church of the Snows. And James O'Connor, a great local historian on Muckrus Abbey and Muckrus Park. Walter. Thank you for having us. Welcome to Muckrus Abbey. Thank you. Welcome to the southwest of Ireland, to the most beautiful, the most historic county of Ireland. Welcome to the Kingdom of Kerry. I came to Killarney about five years ago and I fell in love with Killarney and in Killarney and now I'm very lucky to call it my home. I was actually living in beautiful West Cork and I came here five years ago to write a book on Killarney and I haven't left yet because Killarney simply got into my heart. Oh, Killarney is such an amazing place. I've lived here now for a few years. Back around the 1100s when the Anglo-Normans came to Ireland, it, they sort of drove the McCarthys and the O'Donoghues from Cashel around Tipperary down here to Killarney. And the same families are here right to this day. They were the sort of chieftains from the 1100s up to about the late 1500s after the Desmond rebellions of the late 1500s. The Fitzgerald family, they lost most of their lands in North Kerry and Limerick and a lot of Cork. And then they were replaced as such here by the Brown family. And they were initially given about 8,000 acres down around from Kiloglin around to the Dingle Peninsula. And they cleverly swapped that 8,000 acres for 8,000 acres around Killarney, including the lakes. So that family, the Brown family, lived in this area and they were very highly respected and they were, they, they were actually a, a Catholic family and they lived here for about 400 years. Down in the Muckras estate we had the Herbert family who were Protestant but they lived here as well for about 400 years and they were good friends and even during the famine times they did so much for the tenants and the small farmers around Killarney. The Herberts even employed an agricultural instructor during the famine times and they brought in seeds of other crops like carrots and parsnips and turnips just to grow other crops so that the farmers and the tenants wouldn't starve and wouldn't be relying totally on the potato. So they were, they were good landlords. This was a good place. There's a good vibe around Killarney ever since. And the same McCarthy's and the same O'Donoghue's and the same families continue to this day to look after all the people in the area, in the county, and all of us who come and visit this beautiful Kingdom of Kerry.
We're going now to meet a real Killarney man, Pat Moynihan, who's going to tell us all about the wonders of the Kingdom of Kerry. There's so much to see, there's so much history in Killarney, so much beauty in Killarney that one could really spend a week or two weeks here. There's no end of the time you could spend here. But if you're coming in and you only have a couple of days, I'd say, look, okay, obviously get on my red bus. That's the first thing, you've got to do that anyway, right? So we visit like Mockers House, Mockers Gardens, Mockers Abbey, Tork Waterfall, Ross Castle, built in the 15th century, the seat of power for those who ran Killarney for many centuries. That's built right on the shores of Loch Lane, Killarney's largest lake. Beautiful trip out to Irish Fallon Island. Just takes 20 minutes by boat to get there. That island, Irish Fallon Island, was originally used as a leper colony back in the 4th and 5th centuries before a man called Fallon, who was the son of the then King of Kerry, went onto the island in the, in the 5th century and built a monastery there, which was uh, then consecrated and worked on and lived in by a man called St. Finnan the leper. I always advise people, if they possibly can, to fit in what we call locally the Gap of Dunlow tour. Right? Well, that involves getting on a boat at Ross Castle. The guys will take you up through the three lakes of Killarney. Now that involves going through Loch Lane, our largest lake, on then to Muckras Lake, the second largest lake, up through the long, what we call the Long Range River, to the upper lake, and you'd finish up there at a place called Lord Brandon's Cottage. You could walk from there, or indeed take a jaunty car, or, or cycle it. You can take your bicycle on the boat as well, uh, and get, get, make your way then to the seven miles up to Kate Carney's Cottage, a very famous, very historic place. That's one of the most fabulous days you'll ever spend anywhere in Ireland is on that particular tour, I'll be honest with you though. If you just want a sedentary day to see the beauty of Killarney, listen to great local wit, the guys that are really, really good, you'll really love that trip on the lakes of Killarney. Can you sing that song, please? What song? About the lakes of Killarney. They say that the lakes of Killarney are fair. That's something I don't know. <laughs> I do know the song actually, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we spent the most lovely afternoon with Duck Stunahu on the lakes here in Killarney. He, he lives and breathes the lakes, he lives and breathes Killarney. He's such a wonderful man. Tourists have been coming here for hundreds of years. It's a very old trip, the Gafford and Lord trip is the oldest boating trip in Ireland. It started 250 years ago. You know, going back to the old days with the, the, the boatmen and the rowing, and I did the rowing for years and my brothers did it. And the motor is only on the boat since 1980. Yeah. And in the old days, we used to carry 22 people in the boat, four of us rowing. There is 32 islands on the three lakes of Killarney, the upper lake, Loch Anfadin, Gaelic, the middle lake, Muckras Lake they call it, and the lower lake is Loch Lean, Loch Lean Lake of Learning. Innisfallen is the largest island on the lake. Uh, Innisfallen is a sixth century abbey. It's the oldest university in Europe founded by St. Finian. The island is about 23 acres, and the church in the abbey takes up about two and a half acres on the island. It's a lovely island in Isfell and it's the only island on the lakes of Killarney that was inhabited. We're in the middle of the monastery here in Isfell. So this is the ambulatory and this is where the monks would be reading their prayers and meditating. This was just the best place to have a monastery because they had fresh water around them. They had the very best of land for growing, so they were self-sufficient in everything. Can you imagine in the 900s and 1000s here, this was a top European university where scholars came from all over the Celtic lands to study here on Inishvallen Island. The history here is just amazing. So here we are, 12th century, 
church and look at all this is all the Romanesque architecture done with all the local stone. We're in the oratory here in Inishfallen. Um, initially in the 5600s, it was all built of timber, but then when the monks got wealthy, the monasteries were wealthy, they started building everything in stone. So a lot of the stone that built the monastery here in the chapel came from the island, and what they needed extra came from Rabbit Island right behind it. So this is actually a Celtic cross that was found in the bottom of Loch Lane in the lake and it was brought in here and put in here and set up here in the chapel. Hiya dogs! <laughs> How's Bob and Marley? Did Queen Victoria stepped foot at, on land at Glenna. She had tea in Glenna. That apparently now that uh, the cottage uh, was uh, was uh, built specially for her uh, over a space of five years. They were at it. The Herberts were at it. So the love scene of what film was was filmed over there on the edge of the lake. Ryan's daughter, a bit of that was filmed on Ross Island in the 70s. Uh, most of it was made in Dingle, but uh, uh, down Ross Island there, there was a love scene uh, filmed down there on Ross Island, yeah. But all Killarney is romantic. You could be in Killarney for a month on a different trip every day on a different trip every day. That island out there was the last place they mined for copper here, just off Ross Island. And here behind me was one of the original copper mines. And you can still see the blueness in the water from the copper. This was a huge industry about three or 4,000 years ago. And again, back in the 1800s. To me, this is Killarney. This is the real thing. And we are the audience that come and go from this beautiful natural stage. And the people are the same families that have been living here for generations. And they will continue for generations because of the love that they have for their land, their lakes. This is the real Killarney. Killarney is famous for all its crafts and its scenery and its lakes and its mountains and its history. But now it's becoming very famous for its whiskey. And now we're off to meet my old friend, Morris O'Connell. Hello, Walter. Yay. Welcome to Lakeview. Thank you. <laughs> Come on in. What we're trying to do is to bottle this view and our love of this place and the history and the story put that in a bottle and sell it. That's the plan. We do two things here. We grow our own barley. This is where we grow it in the hilly field, just with Karen Tool in the background. And that goes to make uh, Lakeview single estate pot still, which I'll give you a taste of later. We are recreating the tradition of whiskey bonding. We buy spirit from about seven different distilleries at the moment, and we bring it back here. We mature it, finish it, blend it, and bottle it on the estate. And that makes our Liberator range of Sauce whiskies. So come on inside. So this is our maturation storehouse, the house of contentment. What happens here is that we fill these with, with spirit and they mature over the years. Smell that. You can just get the figs and the fruit out of that. Mm. Isn't that delicious? Mm. And that's what finishing does. It changes the, it adds flavors to the whiskey. I'll just show you what this is like. Just smell, smell that. Uh, the quality of the sherry in that was just mm. so good that I just had to buy it. And mm. uh, so we, we're finishing this, our whiskey in these barrels for about, uh, for about um, six months so far. And you can see the color of that is just fantastic. And just have a, have a nose of that and have a taste. Uh, Can 
Can you feel, can you taste the fruit on that, the sherry on it? Yeah, that's very special. So do you want to do another take, Walter? <laughs> this is the whiskey made from barley grown on the estate and matured here in our special microclimate. These are actually ex-red wine barrels. It's actually Mouton Rothschild cast, but I'm not allowed to mention that, so I never do. But this is the first whiskey made from barley grown in Killarney and matured in Killarney. That is of this place, and this is, this is it. This is what we're hoping the world will like. Oh, it's lovely. The whole history of it all is just fantastic. Your direct descendant was Sir James O'Connell, who was brother of the famous Daniel O'Connell, That's the right. Liberator. That's right, yeah. But he was just one of many people in the family. We started off in Kerry in about 1450, in this place over here, Ballycarbury Castle, outside Castle of Ean. We were there importing wines and spirits from Spain and Portugal from 1450 and that carried on quite happily. That was a legal business in those days. Uh, but the English Parliament brought in excise duties, taxes on spirits back in 1661. So what we've been doing quite legally suddenly became taxable and it's not the Kerry way and not the O'Connell way to submit to rules imposed from afar. So we started what they call smuggling for the next couple of hundred years under this man uh, hunting Cap, Morris Hunting Cap O'Connell. He was uh, the uncle of Daniel O'Connell and he had a fleet of about eight ships going to and fro from the continent importing luxury goods and his clients would all have been like him himself. He was a justice of the peace so he would have been supplying the judges and the magistrates and people like that so they didn't want their supply chain interrupted so so he managed to continue for a couple of hundred years quite happily. Daniel O'Connell was, was a bit of a rock star really, wasn't he? He was, absolutely. Queen Victoria, in her diary, she was full of excitement at meeting the great Daniel O'Connell. In 1820, Daniel O'Connell was becoming politically prominent and so the family decided that really we need to drop the smuggling. So in 1820, we went legit and my side of the family moved here to to Lakeview. We've been here on this land for 900 years. This is the first whiskey uh, made from barley grown in Killarney and matured in Killarney. Morris, I think this is a fitting time after a lovely week in Killarney in all sorts of weathers. That's our microclimate for you. It's the time to say Sloan agus gan Buhrlet. Would you like to explain to people what you just said, Walter? May the road rise to meet you. Sloan chef. Take 103, Slodger. <laughs> <laughs> James Purcell, who is continuing the age-old master craftsmanship of woodworking here in Killarney. We're at Ladies' View, where the ladies-in-waiting for Queen Victoria came up and had a picnic on a really hot sunny day in August 1861. And it was so hot and sunny, they nearly all fell asleep. And it was a bit of a problem because the Queen was waiting for them. The Black Valley is up in the valley up here between the mountains. The Gaffer Dunlow just goes through the mountains there to the right. Do you see the white um, building there at the end of the lake? That's Lord Brendan's cottage. And here you've got the upper lake, and then moving down you've got the Long Range River, and that goes straight in under the Old Weir Bridge and into Muckras Lake, or the Middle Lake as it's called. Talk waterfall with the Owen Gareth River hurtling down 
from the Devil's Punch Bowl on Mangerton Mountain. Down over the waterfall, 66 feet, down the river and into Muckus Lake. We're standing here on 400 million year old Devonian Old Red Sandstone, which is acidic. And do you see the moss on the trees? It's a sign that this is the clearest air that you could possibly be breathing. Let's go down to Muckers Abbey and see this amazing yew tree in the middle of the cloister. And we'll meet my friend James O'Connor, who's going to tell us lots more about the mysteries of this lovely monastery. Here we are in the cloister of Muckers Abbey. You can feel it, you can feel it. Tell us a little bit about the cloister and the yew tree, please. Yeah. The tree was planted in 1440. It was a sapling brought from Innisfallen. 1440, you're talking about 550 years. The history was that one day an English soldier hacked off a branch, and there was always a prophecy that anyone that touched this tree, not to mind cut off a branch, would die. That evening, that man died. So the locals always had that history here in Killarney, that you don't touch the tree, and definitely don't hack off a branch. There's been a history of tourism in Killarney for 250 years. They say Queen Victoria started tourism, but I'd say you can go back further. During the Romantic period, we had all the poets here, and they all wrote about Killarney, because Killarney in the 1830s was reckoned to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. George Bernard Shaw, he stayed in Muckra's house um, in 1926, and they say it inspired a lot of his work. Bram Stoker um, worked f as a civil servant and he stayed in Killarney. A lot of his inspiration came from, from his, his life in Killarney. So you could say the first 100 years here, the, the monks lived with the people as such and in uh, peace and tranquility. In 1652 was when Cromwell's army came to Killarney. And of course, Ross Castle uh, was the main building that they took. So at that time then, the, this building was burned and uh, that, that finished the monks in the Abbey for a certain period. Now they came back again uh, 30 years, 40 years later uh, and they, they, they stayed here for a number of years before finally they moved into different, different, different abbeys in Killarney. The tower is reputed to be the largest tower uh, of a Franciscan church in Ireland. Here now we have the tombs of the McCarthy's, the O'Donoghue's, the Sullivan's, the McGillicuddy's, these were the chieftains all through 16th, 17th, 18th century. So the closer you got to the east window, the higher standing you were. When we were finished in Muckers Abbey, we wandered down to Muckers House where the whole craft centre is. And we got chatting to John Cahill, who told us a little bit about himself and what they do. Welcome to Muckers Weavers, Walter. Uh, my name is John Cahill, I'm here at Muckras, I'm the weaving manager. Started here in 1976 and uh, started outside Muckras uh, on the hand looms and um, after that um, we started going out exporting to um, shops in the USA and to Ireland and uh, now we sell up to, into about 200 shops in the USA and to maybe most of the, most of the shops in Ireland as well. The main sellers for us really, like we do about five or six different ranges of scarves and you'll see these, all these being woven in the workshop as well. And also from the tweed we, we make, and we make up headwear like uh, men's caps and uh, ladies caps. And um, yeah, all these are available now all over the world thanks to the, thanks to the internet. We got to go inside the craft centre in Muckers House where we actually saw them making the pottery. and then into Paul Curtis, who was doing the very famous bookbinding here, an old Killarney craft.
Here we are in the beautiful Mokras house, built in 1843. We are so privileged being allowed in and to film here in Mokras house. This is amazing. This is the fourth Mokras house. So the other three Mokras houses, one was on the Mokras Peninsula, the first one. The second one was about 500 yards towards Killarney. And the third one was called Talk Cottage, which was much bigger than the cottage, but over towards Talk Waterfall, right beside it. So the Herberts lived on here in the Muckers estate for about 200 years. And in August 1861, they had Queen Victoria to stay here for two nights. They spent a huge amount of money on the house and the gardens, as you can imagine. And then in 1899, the estate was put up for sale and Lord Ardillon of the Guinness family bought it. And he mostly, he didn't live here, he mostly just let it out as a hunting lodge. Uh, William Burroughs Bourne, the big mining family from California, bought the estate as a wedding present for their daughter Maud, who was marrying Arthur Rose Vincent from County Clare. And they had two children, um, Billy and Rosie, but Maud unfortunately, very, very sadly, died young. And William Burroughs Bourne and his son-in-law, Arthur Rose Vincent, decided to give the estate to the state in 1932 and virtually nothing happened here until 1964 and then it was all open to the public. So this is the very bed that Queen Victoria slept in for two nights in August 1861. Can you imagine here back in the 1800s with Henry Arthur Herbert playing billiards with Valentine Brown after dinner some evening? Here's an ancient old Sioux terrain. Muckers House is just over here and, and the Boat House and Dundag Beach on Muckers Lake is right behind me. And here was one of the oldest habitations in all of Killarney, probably all of Ireland. So there would normally be a couple of houses here and a Sioux terrain, underground Sioux terrain between the two houses. And um, sometimes children were put in there or valuables were put in there and if anybody was invading that's where everything was hidden right there in the Sioux terrain. This is a really interesting place for geologists and botanists and zoologists. You've got limestone over on the right hand side of Muckras Lake here, old Devonian old red sandstone over the other side from 500 million years ago and the divide is right down the middle of Muckras Lake. And then you've got the yew trees growing naturally on the, the limestone here. You've got the arbutus tree, also known as the strawberry tree. You've got the holly and you've got the, all the old oak woodlands over there on Tomy's Mountain, the other side of the lake. There are 14 different species of fish here in the lake and just below Tork here, is um, the deepest part of the three lakes of Killarney. So this is the beautiful sandy Dundag beach that hardly anybody knows about, but the children of all the families of Killarney would have come to swim here during the summer months for generations. It's hidden away here in lovely Muckras Lake. And behind me are the limestone caves that go in way under the peninsula here. So here are the deer on the left, the Irish native red deer. And they have been breeding, this actual herd has been breeding here since the ice age in this area nearly 10,000 years ago. This is Tluck McCudder up in Knockrear, a very special place. Tluck McCudder is the stone of Cudder, and Brother McCudder was down in Inishfallen Island and he heard this beautiful bird song. And there was a causeway across the lake from Inishfallen over to this side of the lake. And he came across following the bird song, and the bird song brought him up here. And he knelt here on this stone for 200 years, meditating. He didn't realize it was 200 years. And when he woke up afterwards, 
He went back down to Inishfallen Island and nobody knew who he was except they found one reference to him 200 years previously, eventually, that he'd come from there. And you can walk around the tree three times, saying Hail Mary, and you get a special wish. We're here at the gate of the domain, and this is part of one of the ways into the Kinmare estate, which was owned by the Brown family. And this is where all the local people go walking every day. It's fantastic. Now, the Brown family, they straightened this Deanock River behind me, and they straightened the road beside it. There was actually a salmon hatchery halfway down. There was a mill down about a quarter of a mile down there. And we're right beside St. Mary's Cathedral, and they put a lot of money into the building of the cathedral, which finished around 1855. It was started before the famine, and then it was used as a sort of a hospice during the famine. We're in the Kinmare estate, right beside Killarney Town, which was home of the Brown family for about 400 years. 1726, they finished building a huge house here, which went right across what's presently Mission Road, right into where the Plaza Hotel is now. So in the late 1700s, there was a great Thomas Brown. He put boats on the lakes. He could see the future in tourism. In 1861, when Queen Victoria came in, he, she spent her first night in this huge house and she came in the front gates, which are known as the Golden Gates. And she said, oh, this is rather a common looking French chateau, which was a bit of a kick in the backside for the Browns. So what do they do? But then up, at, up in Knock Rear, they built this massive house costing 200,000 pounds at the time in the late 1800s. And in, very sadly, in 1913, by pure accident, that house burnt down. They were actually down in Mucker's house at the time, having dinner with the new owners of Mucker's house, the um, Bowers Bourne family from California. The house you see behind us now is now Killarney House. They do fabulous tour within the house, and there's a great interactive upstairs tour all about the National Park. It's fantastic. Beatrice Grosvenor came and took over the whole estate. And she did super work around Killarney. And lots of people living in Killarney now remember the really lovely Beatrice Grosvenor. She used to go into the schools, into the classes, chat to everybody. She was involved with all the local committees. She was a wonderful woman. And she died around the 1980s. But before that, she sold the house behind me and this land down to the lake to an American syndicate. And they were going to sort of set up a sort of Las Vegas island over here, or Las Vegas, Europe. But there wasn't great local support for that. So that, two years later, they sold this part to John and Mary McShane. Um, he's known as the man that built Washington. He built the Pentagon, he did up the White House, he did a lot of work for a lot of the religious orders over in Washington. He was one of the wealthiest builders in Washington. So the McShanes sold this place to the state and it became a huge part of Killarney National Park, which is now nearly 27,000 acres, which includes the Oak Woods, the Lakes, the Mucris Estate, the Kinmare Estate, and how lucky we all are, locals and foreigners, to have this all to ourselves. One of the main things you have to do in Killarney is take a horse and carriage ride through Killarney National Park. And here we've been lucky enough to meet my friend and Jarvie, Damien McCarthy. So here's one of the famous McCarthy clan descendants. Damien, what do you do with yourself? Well, nowadays we're doing tours of Killarney National Park. We bring you all around to see the lakes, the most scenic uh, spots of the park here. We bring you to Ross Castle, show you the sixth century monastery in Ishpanon Island. We do a wood hour tour all around the National Park. You keep your horses really nice. Yeah, this horse here is Molly. She'll be a traditional Irish cob and we have about 30 of them all together. Wow. We give you a great tour of the park if you're interested. So here's something very special. This is Deanock Lodge. It was built in 1834 as a hunting lodge on the Kinmare Estate. 
and it's now a cafe that opens every Easter until the end of September. But lovely families like Casey's lived here. And then when the Browns built the mansion at the top of the hill in Knock Rear here, um, this became the sort of gate lodge here in the domain in the Knock Rear estate. It's now run by Kerry Down Syndrome as a cafe. The thatch has changed about every 30 years and the, the thatch, each thatcher has their own design for the top of the thatch there. And you see where the chimneys are so high on the lodge. That's to stop the sparks from the fire landing on the thatch and burning it. The landlords in Killarney, the Browns and the Herberts, were really good to their tenants and to the people of Killarney during the famine. There was a lot less hunger in the town, but of course everyone outside in the countryside heard about this and they all came towards the town. They came hungry and they came weak and very sadly there are over 2,000 children buried here right where we stand and here's a memorial to those people that died coming in from outside in towards Killarney. So thank you for joining us here in Killarney. I hope you got a feel for the mystery and the magic, and the scenery and the history and most importantly the people whose families have been living and working here for generations, welcoming people from all over the world to this truly amazing place. So until we meet again, cheers. <laughs> The sun is rising, your shadows fall behind. When all the weight you carry is weighing on your mind, I'll be there to show you all the things you're missing. Everything we go through, I'll be by your side. So let's run away to far away places, escape from this life we have known. Your eyes are new worlds to discover. Your heart is the place I call home.